Darth Vader is one of the most well-known characters in the world. It is quite likely that among those in Star Wars, no one is more famous than him. But there is always some curiosity that we don't know about. If you are a Star Wars fan, you must definitely have the desire or have something of the character. Be it something cheaper like a toy, maybe a Funko Pop, or you can even do some cosplay with him. But the National cathedral in Washington has something you will likely never have and that is Vader's head on one of the building's gargoyles. In the 80s the cathedral held a contest to children. They would send drawings to them and the winners would end up on the gargoyles of the cathedral buildings. One of the children sent in a drawing of Darth Vader and then two artists did the work. Did you know that he appears in Star Wars A New Hope for only 12 minutes. Being such an important character to the franchise, it is normal that we would expect him to be on the movie for much longer. But this is the first Star Wars movie, and George Lucas still had no idea that Vader would become who he is today. Yet he managed to steal the show in the lightsaber fight against Obi-Wan Kenobi and his armor of course. And just to be clear, A New Hope is a two hours long movie. If you watch all the scenes from all the movies in which he appears, you will notice that a few things on his armor are modified, including in episode 3 that the armor had to have modifications compared to the armor design of episode 4 because Hayden Christensen's height was different from David Prowse, the actor who played the character in the classical movies in the original trilogy. Some other modifications is that in episode 4 his eyes, depending on the angle of the camera, you can see something red, something reddish, you know? And we also see a small chain on his neck holding the cape. The back of the helmet is also slightly changed from one movie to another. We know that in the original trilogy, Vader was played by David Prowse, who was the body, and by James Earl Jones, who was the voice of the character. However, originally his voice would be played by David Prowse himself, but George Lucas didn't like his voice and started to looking for someone to voice the character, to dub him. Initially, he came to the film director Orson Welles, who made one of the greatest classics of American cinema called Citizen Kane. However, George preferred to choose a lesser known voice at the time and he came to James Earl Jones. And if you never heard the name David Prowse, and haven't even seen his face anywhere because he's not the one we saw in the final moments of episode 6, know that he could be a lot more famous than you would think because originally in the script that George wrote, Vader wasn't supposed to wear his helmet all the time, but then a man called. Ralph McQuarrie stepped in, started to design the concept art for the film and had Vader wear a helmet so he could breathe on his travels. With that in mind, George decided to make the character wear his helmet all the time. I can bet very few of you have heard the name called Bob Anderson, but he was the one who performed the fight scenes in episode 5 and 6 wearing the Vader armor. And according to Wikipedia, this actor change happened because David Prowse had a tendency to break a lot of sabers, so another person with more fighting skills was used in combat scenes. In total, six actors played Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader in the movies. They are Jake Lloyd, Hayden Christensen, James Earl Jones, David Prowse, Sebastian Shaw, that is the man behind the mask in episode 6, and Bobby Anderson. Darth Vader or Anakin Skywalker is one of the few characters to appear in the first six 
movies. And if it weren't for Disney's acquisition of the franchise earlier in the last decade, he would possibly be in every Star Wars movie. The other characters that are in all six movies are R2-D2, C-3PO, who appears quite differently in The Phantom Menace, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, who appears as a ghost of the Force in The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Although we have seen in the movies that Emperor Palpatine informs that Luke Skywalker was indeed the son of Anakin Skywalker, who gave this information firsthand was actually Boba Fett. And just to be clear, Boba Fett didn't know that Darth Vader was Anakin Skywalker. Regardless of how dark the character is, regardless of who he is, if the character is in, in Connect Star Wars, he is going to dance a little bit. And that is exactly what happens to Vader in the game.